Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Investigation agency in Jammu and Kashmir files charge sheet against three Hezbollah terrorists. Terror attacks continue in Afghanistan amidst humanitarian crisis. And Pak-backed Khalistani ultras looking to spread terrorism in India. Let's begin the show with Jammu and Kashmir, where the state investigation agency has filed a charge sheet against three Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorists, including a father-son duo, before the special court of the National Investigation Agency. The agency in its investigations also unearthed a large sinister design of Pakistan and the so-called misguided youth who on travel documents travel to Pakistan on the pretext of pursuing professional courses but reach to terror camps to get arms training and wage jihad against India. Asif Shabir Naik is a resident of Doda district of Jammu and Kashmir. His father's name is Shabir Hussain Nayak, who is currently operating from Pakistan. Both of them are Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorists against whom the State Investigation Agency in Jammu and Kashmir has filed a charge sheet. The charge sheet has also been filed against Asif's associate Safdar Hussain, who also belongs to Doda. He is also a Hezbollah terrorist based in Pakistan. Asif is in judicial custody after his arrest and the other two accused have been challenged as absconders. The investigation revealed that Hezbollah Mujahideen, with the blessings of Pakistani agencies, gave the cover of studentship to Asif but misused his stay in Pakistan to meet his father, a senior figure of the terrorist outfit. Pakistan had arranged his admission in International Islamic University in Islamabad in a mass communication program and simultaneously facilitated his internship in the media cell of Hezbollah Mujahideen run by his father. The forensics of phone devices of Asif showed that he had videographed army installations along the Baramula Srinagar road. He had also photographed the access road to the airport and security features adjacent to it. The investigation has pointed out how Pakistani agencies have been brazenly misusing not only the travel on the basis of valid documents but also the Indian students going to Pakistan for higher studies. ISI and Pakistan Army, they are very clear in their motives and their motive is to ensure that they are able to sabotage whatever development and other plans are there in India. And for that, they use all sorts of means. Now, Asif's father was already in Pakistan and he has been there for since a long time. And he is now as the propaganda chief of Hezbollah Mujahideen that is run by Sayyid Salahuddin. Now, Asif has been going there posing as a student. And for that, they have given him admission also to Islamic University as a, in mass communication. He has stayed there for three years. That is very surprising. And along with that, he has been trained in all those three years, instead of doing mass communication, he has been trained in sabotage and other means of how to spy. Apart from this, there are many other students who go to Pakistan. And now, after this case, it seems that everyone has to be investigated as to how many of them have been converted by the Pakistani authorities over there. Hundreds of students from Jammu and Kashmir have traveled to Pakistan in recent years for higher studies. Few of them were brainwashed, provided arms training or recruited in sleeper cells with a motive to gather information to be shared with the handlers sitting across the border. According to a recent report, 17 youths who went to Pakistan for studies have been killed at the line of control while infiltrating Kashmir or during encounters with terror outfits. Investigations have revealed that a separatist lobby arranges valid travel documents from the Pakistan embassy to facilitate students' visits to the country for admission. State Investigation Agency has also filed charge sheets against many people in Kashmir for selling MBBS seats in Pakistani colleges and using the process for terror activities. 
higher education regulators therefore have advised Indian students, including overseas citizens of India, not to travel to Pakistan for higher studies. It is very essential that what the AICT has done this time that they have debarred any person who studied in Pakistan that degree or recognition in, into India and they have said it very clearly that they will not get any jobs. But apart from that, India should ban any student going to such countries because there it is very well known that instead of they being given education, they are educated in terrorism means and to spy into India. Security officials have been tracking the youths who travelled to Pakistan on valid visas for short durations and disappeared after their return. They believe that they could have become sleeper cells of terror groups operating from across the border. While the tenure of Kashmiri students stay may vary, they are trained in operating assault rifles of AK series and using hand grenades. Some of the youths have also been used for money laundering by Pakistan-based terror groups. This is being done to show that the terrorism in Kashmir is an indigenous movement. However, the entire world knows that Pakistan is the epicenter of terrorism, which nurtures terrorist entity. Moving on. Pakistan's involvement in the Khalistan movement is well documented. On various occasions, arrests of pro-Khalistan elements in India have revealed the direct involvement of Pakistan. Recently, four suspected Pak-backed Khalistani terrorists were apprehended in the state of Haryana and it is suspected that they were planning for a major attack. A large cache of weapons was recovered from them. A report. Busting a big terror plot, Haryana and Punjab police in India along with the central security agencies arrested four suspected Khalistani terrorists from Karnal district. According to the police, the four arrested men are Gurpreet Singh, his brother Amandeep Singh, Parminder Singh and Bupinder Singh. They were arrested while they were en route to Delhi in a white Toyota Innova. Three containers holding improvised explosive, each weighing 2.5 kg, one loaded pistol and 35 life cartridges were also recovered from the vehicle. Additionally, six mobile phones and Rs 1,30,000 were also found in the car with the four men. Police had received information that suspected terrorists would be trying to cross the border. Reacting to the intel, security was increased and they were detained. During the initial interrogation, four men told police that their handler is based in Pakistan. A wanted Khalistan terrorist, Harvinder Singh, alias Rinda, had assigned them locations. Interrogation has revealed that the arrested men are couriers of a large terror racket operating from Pakistan. देखिए डेफिनेटली जैसे ही हमें सुबह इंफॉर्मेशन मिली जो क्रेडिबल इनपुट मिला था उसी इनपुट पे हमने कार्रवाई की थी और हमारी टीमें को हमने अलर्ट किया और सुबह सुबह के आसपास हमारी डायल एक सौ बारह गाड़ी बड़ी तुरंत से वहाँ पर बस्तारा टोल के पास में पहुंची और हमारी जो लोकल पुलिस स्टेशन गाड़ी है वो भी तुरंत मौके पर पहुँच गई एस समेत और चारों जो टीमें हैं इन्होंने बड़े अच्छे ढंग से काम किया Park backed Khalistan elements are continuously attempting to disturb Punjab's peace, stability and communal harmony. Pro Khalistan sympathizers believe that one day the time will come and the ISI and Pakistani establishment are trying their best to make that happen. Islamabad's role in supporting the Khalistan movement is a direct consequence of 1971 breakup of Pakistan. When Bangladesh was formed out of East Pakistan with the help of the Indian Armed Forces. Following 1971 war, the only thing Pakistan wanted was revenge and more specifically bleeding India with a thousand cuts. Thus, post-1971 Pakistan's policy and strategical measures underwent transitions and became entirely dedicated to hurt India along the religious, political and ethnic lines. In this way, the foundation of the Khalistan movement was laid. The ethnic cleansing, post-conversions, targeted attacks on Gurudwaras have reduced the sex 
Hindus and the Christians into a small fraction of a community in Pakistan. Yet, Islamabad assumes to be the champion of a Khalistani causes and supports the Khalistan militancy. Interestingly, Khalistani organizations are also asking for support from Pakistan, where Sikhs who are in the minority often face atrocities at the hands of the majority population. What is even more interesting is that when these organizations release the proposed map of Khalistan, they conveniently skip adding parts of Punjab that are in Pakistan, where many major shrines of the Sikh religion are located. The Khalistani groups supported by Pakistan lack a sense of geography as well as history. If their objective was to create an independent Khalistan, then major portion of Pakistan, Punjab province would also be included in the same. However, they try to portray the map of the so-called Khalistan, which includes parts of Indian Punjab only. The pro-Khalistan agenda for a separate homeland has no takers in Punjab. The new generation in Punjab has totally rejected pro-Khalistani separatist malicious propaganda and has opposed any such move that divides people along lines of faith. Hence, those supporting Khalistan movement should now understand that it cannot achieve its goal of forming a separate Khalistan either through conventional war or through other conspiracies. Let's now talk about Afghanistan which has been grappling with an acute food crisis. With over 22 million people, or more than half of the country's population, suffering from severe hunger and the majority unable to anticipate when their next meal will arrive. On one hand, Afghans are facing humanitarian crisis. On the other hand, the war-torn country is witnessing a series of terror attacks staged by Islamic State group. This year, Afghans celebrated Eid al-Fitr under the shadow of terror and sorrow. Take a look. This year, the religious celebration of Eid al-Fitr in Afghanistan was not colorful. Bloody attacks on mosques and schools in several provinces during the final days of Ramadan put Afghans on edge as they celebrated the Islamic holiday. The war-torn country has witnessed a series of terror attacks staged by Islamic State group in the last few weeks. Just before Eid, a powerful explosion killed more than 50 worshippers at a mosque located in the west of Kabul. The attack came as worshippers at Khalifa Sahib Mosque gathered after Friday prayers for a congregation known as Zikr, an act of religious remembrance practiced by some Muslims but seen as heretical by some hardline Sunni groups. The explosion tore through the mosque, damaging the roof, which caved in on worshippers. Just a day before the incident, at least nine people were killed and 15 wounded in separate blasts on two minibuses in the city of mazar -e sharif in northern Afghanistan. دیروز اینا می تصادف کرد راه داد ساعت چهار چهار بچه دیگر بوده که دمیزه کار قبول دانک اینا می سرعت گرفت انتوری دیگه ما از اینا می تقاضام نکنیم که باید با زودترین وقت جلو و زی کارا گرفته شو و ما می خوایم که بیاد. Following the massive explosion at Khalifa Sahib Mosque, a passenger van bombing in Kabul next day. Left at least one person dead. Attacks against civilians targeting ethnic and religious minorities represent a disturbing trend in Afghanistan. The Taliban say they have secured the country since taking power in August and largely eliminated the Islamic State's local offshoot. But international officials say the risk of a resurgence in terrorism remains. Many analysts say. These attacks are the result of the irresponsible withdrawal of U.S. troops last year, which promised to restore peace for Afghan people.
داشت شما ببینید که وقتی که امریکایی ها در افغانستان آمدن چند وعده کلان در افغانستان دادن وعده اول آنها مبارزه با گروه, گروه های تروریستی مانند القاعده و گروه های دیگه ای که در افغانستان بودن و اول در امنیت در افغانستان از دوم بحث حکومتداری خوب و بحث ارزش های دموکراسی متاسفانه نه امنیت در افغانستان آمد نه حکومتداری خوب در افغانستان شکل گرفت و نه دموکراسی به معنای واقعیش در افغانستان اجرا شد On one hand, Afghanistan faces an endless threat of terrorism. On the other hand, the country finds itself gripped by a severe humanitarian crisis. More than 90% of Afghans have been facing a shortage of food. Millions of Afghans are struggling to put food on the table. For them, the next meal is a matter of faith. The rising cost of food means many families and their children are only surviving on bread and water. نن راغلی من تصودا خیستلو تا کوم شی بچ مخ کی بسلو اوس په 2 سوادا مخ کی بان 2 کیلو در کیلو ورت مجبوره نه یو کیلو نه سوړای حکومت نه دایله کو دار نه کونه کنټرول کی People in Afghanistan had dreamed of peace and an end to conflicts to improve their situation but not at the cost of losing the last 20 years of achievements it seems that the forever war in Afghanistan is nowhere near its end Pakistan's primacy in the international narcotics trade and the funding of terrorist activities has been time and again confirmed by several investigation agencies worldwide there are clear indications that pakistan based narco terrorist networks have stepped up their activities on the indo pakistan international border the recent seizure of huge quantities of heroin from pakistani drug peddlers have shown how narco terror has become a major concern for the law enforcing agencies in india we have a report narcotic trafficking The phenomena which started as an organized cross-border crime has now emerged as a global threat because of its diabolic alliance with terrorist groups. India has been facing the menace of narco-terrorism for several years. To keep the terror machine running, Pakistan has been using narcotics as a major financing tool in Kashmir. While it has been pushing trained terrorists into Kashmir and also deadly arms and ammunition beside fake currency, Narcotics are being pumped into the valley to reach Indian markets like Punjab, Delhi, Mumbai to generate money for terror operations and recruitment. Pakistan-based narco-terrorist networks have stepped up their activities on the Indo-Pakistan international border and are making incessant attempts to push trucks into India. Narcotics are generally trafficked to India through border states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. Recently the Indian Coast Guard and Gujarat Anti-Terror Squad apprehended a Pakistan fishing boat with 9 crew members on board and recovered an unspecified quantity of narcotics from them. Afghanistan is the prime source of opium supply to the world drug markets and Pakistan is the transport hub with drug networks operating from the country using its drug routes to reach international markets. The drug trafficking is going to be more problematic over the coming years with the re-rise of Taliban and will pose an acute threat over the regional security in South Asia. Pakistan's formal economy is in a poor state. Everyone knows that the narco money is being used to fund the terrorists as well as to generate money through irregular means and therefore with hakani in the government in afghanistan uh, pakistan finds that this is a lucrative trade and therefore the drug cartels are trying every possible means to send the narcotics into india and create a market and also spoil the new generation
Use of narcotics for terror funding by Pakistan's ISI is being seen as a trick to avoid being traced back. Islamabad has constantly tried to upgrade its proxy and hybrid war strategy to challenge India's internal security and hence Indian security forces also need to be more vigilant as the country can no longer afford to be stuck on the back foot to foil Pakistan's designs. Pakistan knows that it cannot fight a conventional war with India and therefore it continues to raise an asymmetric war in which narcotics has a major role to play because narcotic money is not in formal economy and therefore cannot be caught by FATF. So they keep sending this money. As far as India is concerned, our strategy should be that we should be able to firstly prevent it in entering India by good border fencing, good border defences, as well as good intelligence, good surveillance and technologically empowering the border security forces. The nexus between drug traffickers, criminal networks and terrorists are a potent threat. Exploitation of the trafficking networks by terrorists with the help of well-entrenched criminal networks to infiltrate arms and explosives have added a critical dimension to the security of the borders. Moreover, large-scale availability of narcotics and drugs encourages demand for narcotics and drugs by domestic population. Consumption of which produces dysfunctional behavior thereby creating law and order problem in the society. Therefore, India needs to adopt a comprehensive approach to tackle this challenge. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.